It is not easy to come up with and to stick with a good definition of the actus reus of the crime, of attempting a crime. The difficulty is compounded when the circumstances are such that success is an impossibility. To see the problem, consider the case of People versus Dlugash. Dlugash shot a man who was probably already dead. Therefore, Dlugash could not be convicted of a crime of homicide. The prosecution has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt that the victim was living when the accused acted, and that the prosecution could not do. Could Lugash be convicted of attempted murder? Surveying the cases, the Lugash court noted the importance that had been assigned to a distinction between two types of impossibility. A conviction for taking deer out of season had been set aside in one case on the ground that it is legally impossible to successfully take a deer out of season by shooting a decoy, a fake deer. On the other hand, a conviction for attempted murder had been upheld where the defendant had fired shots into a pillow believing it to be the body of his sleeping intended victim. That court had rationalized what it did by insisting that killing a person by shooting a pillow is merely factually and not legally impossible. This was the received traditional doctrine. Legal impossibility is a defense, but factual impossibility is no defense. The Lugash court refused to let itself be suckered into inquiring whether committing murder by shooting a corpse is legally or merely factually impossible. It was able to do this because it was guided by a New York statute modeled on the Model Penal Code. According to the Model Penal Code, Neither legal nor factual impossibility is a defense to a charge of an attempt crime. Lugash could be convicted of attempted murder even if the attempt was made upon a dead body. That was because the jury had already found that the accused acted with the belief that the victim was still living. Lugash's jury had, after all, convicted him of murder. So in one swoop, the model penal code does away with the need to solve the metaphysical puzzle of whether an impossibility is legal or merely factual. Under the model penal code, it does not matter. It is not a defense either way. What about this case, though? A prisoner held in a Mississippi penitentiary manages to get hold of some hair clippings from the head of the judge who sentenced him. The prisoner casts a voodoo spell on the judge in revenge, intending that the judge die. Attempted murder? Under traditional doctrine, the defendant might not be in dangerous proximity of success. Under the model penal code, however, this looks like a substantial step strongly corroborative of criminal intent. And what of those persons of faith who fervently pray for the death of the president? Are they too, like the voodoo prisoner, convictable of attempted murder under the Model Penal Code? The drafters of the Model Penal Code saw this problem coming, and they provided for it this way. The court retains discretion to dismiss in extreme cases in which the conduct is so inherently unlikely to succeed that neither such conduct nor the actor presents a public danger. Is voodoo so inherently unlikely to succeed? Is prayer? Or should the court finesse that question by finding that the prisoner and the parishioners do not present a public danger?